Test induction. My name is Tyler Hamilton, and I'm, this, and I'm the president of this year's National Honor Society. We are pleased that you are here and welcome you to GCA. In past years, MHS has been involved with Pennies for Patients and the American Red Cross. This year, my role as president, I would like for us to be even more involved and help out with the community and the student body. We are a group that aims for excellence, and your child has proven their excellence by being accepted into NHS. Again, welcome to the 2013-2014 National Honor Society induction. We are honored and glad that you are here. Please bow your heads for prayer. Dear Lord, thank you that we're all here safe and sound in church. Please be with us as um, we go on with this program. Thank you for NHS. Thank you for the school. Thank you for the students that are part of this group. Um, thank you for all your blessings, and please help us have a good rest of our evening. In your name I pray. Amen. <coughs> I've got waves that are tossing me, crashing all over my beliefs, and all sincerity, Lord, I want to be yours, mm. so put me out of this mess I'm in, cause I know I'm wondering, lead my soul back home again, I've always been yours, and this world may push, may pull, but your mercy never fails, you lead, I follow, your hands on my tomorrow, your grip, your grace, you know the way, guide me tenderly, yeah, you lead, I follow, just like the way, and I'll go, cause I know what you got for me, it's more than I can see, so lead me on, on. As a girl, I made my choice. There is no other way for me. I'm devoted to you. Oh, you're my peace on the heavy days. You're the warmth in the autumn blaze. Your love carries me away, and it's never too soon. No, this world may push, may pull, but your mercy never fails. You lead, I'll follow. Your hands on my tomorrow. Your grip, your grace, you know the way God me tenderly, yeah. You lead, I'll follow, just like the way you not go. Cause I know what you got for me, it's more than I can see. So lead me on, on, on and on, just lead me on, on, on and on. Sometimes when I wake up, I don't want to rise up. Out of my bed, too many thoughts in my head. Gonna be who I used to be. Gonna take the back seat and let you lead. And I, I, I need to stop, need to stop, cause I'm going too fast. And I, I know my God is a God and you got my back. You lead, I'll follow. Your hands on my tomorrow. Your grip, your grace, you know the way God me tenderly. Yeah, you lead, I'll follow. Just let the way you not go. I know what you got for me, it's more than I can see, so lead me on, on, on and on, just lead me on, on, on and on, I, I, I need to stop, need to stop, cause I'm going too fast, and I, know my God is for God, and you got my back, and you got my back.
evening. So, today I have the opportunity, it's another opportunity to introduce to you our speaker. Our speaker is Mr. Serge Garifi. He is raised as the oldest of three boys by two deaf parents. He went to Mount Pisgah Academy, Academy where he met and graduated with his wife. He graduated from Southern and he taught at Rio Linda Academy for six years where he was vice principal for the last two years. He, this is his sixth year here at GCA and he has three awesome kids, Aiden, Samantha, and Ellie Garapy. He loves traveling and doing mission trips and he loves to learn new things. So without further ado, the next voice you will hear is Mr. Serge Garapy. Thank you, Chloe. Greetings, students, faculty, parents, and uh, all those watching from home via our online streaming service. Uh, I want to say that I feel honored to have been selected to be your speaker tonight, or today. I'm not, I'm not sure yet if it's night yet, but yeah. And I want to congratulate all of uh, the inductees, your parents and your teachers. I've, uh, I've had the privilege of speaking for a graduation before, and now I can cross giving the NHS induction speech off my bucket list, so thank you. But seriously, all of your accomplishments in the areas of scholarship, leadership, community service, and character are being honored by your induction into the National Honor Society. As a member of the NHS committee, I got to sit and read through your applications, your essays, letters of recommendation, and to see if you fulfilled the requirements for being admitted into this organization. The NHS is the premier national society created to recognize outstanding high school students. The four requirements for membership into NHS, NHS uh, academics, leadership, community service, and character are not randomly chosen areas. They are at the core of what we try to do here at GCA. The mission statement is to foster an educational environment of excellence where students, faculty, and staff pursue a shared goal to know Jesus as savior and friend, to know God and love those he brings into our lives and to serve the church and society. We, we summarize that mission statement as to know, to love, and to serve. And here you are. I, I'm proud to have been a part of your academic journey, but when I see you sitting here, my pride isn't just limited to the academic side of what I do here at GCA. I, I see you sitting here and I'm proud of your accomplishments because I consider you part of my family. And perhaps as family, one of the things that I can do for you is to speak frankly with you. I, I actually brought all of your applications here with me today. And, and I wanted to highlight a, a few of them, uh, if you don't mind. These are the things that, that you put on the list that you, th you felt qualified you for consideration into NHS. Okay. Starting fielder and leadoff batter, baseball, ninth and 10th grade. That's pretty good. Praise team leader, okay. VBS monitoring of younger kids, that's good. Lifeguard, worked at the food bank, okay, good stuff. Okay, not, not too bad. Here's somebody else, uh, road cleanup. That's pretty good, road cleanup. Uh, tutor, oh that's, that's pretty good. Tutor, 10th, 11th, and 12th grades, uh, 10 hours a week. Um, not bad. Uh, short little uh, essay, looks pretty good, but I don't know. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, oh, pretty good, longer essay there. Got some class offices. GPA is higher than 3.5, that's, that's good. Uh, we even have a couple of newly appointed students of the month in this group here. It's a new GCA this year, so it's pretty exciting. Mission trips, of course. Um, yeah, that's good. Uh, let's see. Um, desk worker, receptionist. Okay. Uh, you're in NH NHS, congratulations. Uh, all right, good, all right, that's, uh, that was a good one. 
Um, I think you're getting the, uh, the point here. Um, you've got some great stuff on here. Principal's list, uh, junior deacon at uh, a church from your home church. Teacher's assistant. Ooh, cafeteria worker. I like that one. <laughs> that, one's, that one's a good one. Um, but yeah, you, know, you guys, you know, you're putting the things that, that you, you've done, the things that have distinguished you among your peers, right? Um, but, like, what, I mean, what, what, what is it worth? I mean, really. Like, let me just go ahead and spare us all the, the time here for a minute. Um, what I want to do is this. I would like to tell you a little bit about myself, okay? Student missionary Taiwan. Okay, here you go. Double major. GPA 3.75. Student teacher of the year award. Yeah. Master's degree. Woohoo! GCA uh, teacher award recipient. And, and the best one of the list, uh, NHS uh, induction speaker. Yeah. Did I get your attention? Did, did you guys, did, did you appreciate that? Did you guys like that? Was that good? It sounded good, didn't it? You like that? <clears throat> we can try to make ourselves sound good, but here's what God says in 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of men uh, or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. That's right. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries, and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am, I am nothing. I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. When I was a high school student, I struggled to find motivation. I was a bright enough student, but I didn't really care. I often found myself finishing assignments in class on the days they were due. You guys never, never did that. But I even found myself sometimes copying off the person next to me. Never. You guys, I know you never do that. Um, especially during my sophomore and junior years, uh, I, I have to admit my academic integrity was uh, basically non-existent. But early in my senior year, something clicked. I, I found myself with a group of friends um, that cared about studying and cared about getting good grades. I discovered a love for actually helping people, especially with pre-calculus. Um, it's, it's funny how that, that works out. Um, my wife, uh, friend, and then girlfriend at the time uh, was included in my, my tutoring of pre-calculus. In fact, it may have been my, my powers of mathematical assistance that won my wife over. So, you guys remember that? She says that's not the case, but I know better. Uh, but seriously, something clicked in my senior year, and I started to love the, uh, the process of learning, the love the process of learning and helping. And that automatically led to the good grades that I was able to get in my classes. And I didn't need to copy off anyone because I already read the chapter and ahead of time, and I happened to know the answers. And I didn't have to let anyone copy off of me because I was ready to help them out, and I enjoyed doing so. So I guess my question comes back to this uh, you know, why, why are you here? Like, what's, what's your motivation uh, for being a good student, for being on NHS? Last month, I was one of the bus drivers for the Acrofest trip to Southwestern, uh, down in Keene. And I remember walking into the gym and seeing a giant banner hanging on the wall. For some reason, they gave me a t-shirt for, uh, for being the bus driver. Um, for uh, Acrofest this year. Why are you here? What are you doing here? Like, why are you here, really? What, what, do, you, what do you bring to the table, right? Well, that, that was kind of like the, 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 the gist of it that I got when I first walked in. Why are you here? And, uh, and I joked around with some of you guys. You probably remember I was kind of joking around about uh, the theme and how, uh, you know, it, it felt off-putting a little bit. But as the, the few days went by, I, it started to sunk in what the whole point was. The point was not... To, be, to belittle anyone individually, but to say, what is your motivation for being here? Why are you here? Why are you here? 
And I felt like when they were talking about the Acrofest stuff, they were asking, like, were, were you here to show off your tumbling moves? Uh, are you a, a school that does three highs better than other schools? Um, were you uh, really good at tossing, maybe? Or were you just there to, like, interact with, uh, with members of the opposite gender from other schools, maybe? No, probably not that. <laughs> or perhaps were you there to learn from each other, to share in a positive experience, and to lift each other up in the process? If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. So why are you here? Did you want to be a part of NHS for college admission, to have something to put that looks pretty on your transcript or your, your resume? Are you here because your parents expected of you? Or are you here because you want to be the best person that you can be? You know, whatever the re reason, it's meaningless in God's eyes. If you're not motivated by love for God and love for your fellow man. This is something that we all struggle with, myself included. I believe I am here doing God's work, and that teaching is my calling. But if I'm not doing the work with love for God, then there is no lasting significance. I have to remind myself that I don't do this job for my paycheck. I don't do this job for Dr. Gerard. I do it for God and for the love I have for him and for my students. Otherwise, all the accomplishments I can list for myself are about as meaningless as crashing symbols. So I, I challenge you to see your goals and accomplishments in this light. Be proud of what you have done, not because it is something that makes you look good, but because it's another opportunity to show God's love through you. We are proud of you. All of us here online, all of us here uh, supporting you are very proud of you. We're proud of your accomplishments. I'm not trying to belittle any of that right now. Um, all your accomplishments show the kind of people that you are becoming. But don't let your accomplishments give you a big head. Rather, let's follow 1 Corinthians 10.31, where it says, Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Every time I get another break 
shining from your face Every time I get another glimpse of your heart I realize it's true that you are so marvelous God I am so in love with you something that is that you in in a way you work for it but not by skills not by how you academically do but it's something that you build a connection with God to gain it's something that you show your peers that you care about them it's something that you show through how you portray yourself to everyone that you are um, that you're close to God character. Service can be described in various ways. In the routine of the day's work, many opportunities arise to help others. Willingness, willingness to work for the benefit of those in need, without monetary compensation or without recognition, is a quality we seek in our membership. We are committed to the idea of volunteering our time and abilities to the creation of a better tomorrow. Scholarship. Scholarship means a commitment to learning. A student is willing to spend hours in reading and study, knowing the lasting benefits of a cultivated mind. We should continue to learn even when formal education has ended, for education ends only with the end of life. Knowledge is one great element in life, which leads to the highest success, and it can be acquired in only one way, through diligence and effort. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past and the light which illuminates the future. Candidates have the charge to continually expand their world through the opportunities inherent in scholarship. Leadership. Leadership should exert a wholesome influence on the school. 
In taking the initiative in class and school activities, the real leader strives to train and aid others to attain the same objective. The price of leadership is sacrifice, the willingness to yield one's personal interests for the interests of others. A leader has self-confidence and will go forward when others hesitate. No matter what power and resources may exist in a country, they are ineffectual without the guidance of a wise leader. Leadership is always needed. Thus, to lead is a substantive charge to each one of our members. privilege to present to all of these students uh, their certificates this evening, but uh, first I think we will ask that the new inductees uh, recite their pledge. So if those who are new inductees, yes, you're going to want to get that little piece of paper. If, uh, if you would uh, please stand. These are our new inductees, and uh, reading along, we will attempt to read this together, the National Honor Society Pledge. I pledge myself to uphold the high purpose of the National Honor Society to which I have been selected. I will be true to the principles for which it stands. I will be loyal to my school. I will maintain and encourage high standards of scholarship service, leadership, and character. I believe in scholarships as the means of achievement. I believe in leadership as the guide to progress. I believe in service as the object and end of living. I believe in character as the foundation of life. To the upholding of these ideals, I pledge myself, mind, and spirit. Thank you. Eighteen students being inducted into the Georgia Cumberland Academy chapter of the National Honor Society. Throughout this school year at high schools across the United States, similar induction ceremonies will take place. And these students truly are the leaders that we will look to in future years to correct the faults and the problems in our society that we older people have created or been unable to correct. And that is a mounting list, isn't it? We will look to these students to provide the quality of character, outstanding service to each other and to those less fortunate. Every one of these young people who are sitting on this stage are bright, they have high grade point averages. They've demonstrated their ability to do well in school. They have all participated in service activities. They have all demonstrated leadership in various different capacities. They all have character standards that are exemplary. We honor them today. They will be honored again, perhaps, at graduation for the seniors, because these are juniors and seniors. Some of them will be listed in the program, and they'll wear a special snazzy sash with their graduation regalia. I doubt that they will put member National Honor Society on their checks when they have their checks printed. This certificate may not make it onto their office wall someday when they're a professional. But this is an important step because it indicates a direction. It indicates intent. And it indicates that these young people are committed to being the best they can 
And what is distinctive in some ways at this National Honor Society chapter as compared to many others is that these people have also committed themselves to the ideal of Christian service. They understand that they are not just representing themselves when they go from this place, that they are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. And hopefully they will always take that very seriously. So it's my privilege to present these certificates. I'm going to call the 18 new inductees over to meet me right here in this spot. Tatiana is going to, as we say here in the South, make a picture. And uh, as we present these certificates to you, and you'll want to hold on to these. Not long ago, I was going through some old things from uh, my mother and father's old keepsakes and in there were things from my childhood and uh, even from my father's childhood so you may look at this and think yeah big deal well give it to your parents because it is a big deal to them and we're proud of you so I will call you one is one at a time you come over and we'll present these and applause is appropriate by the way Janae Arellano Gregory Burge. <laughs> Chloe Bowen. <laughs> Yvette Cervantes. Aaron Drapiza. <laughs> Caitlin Goffin. Sarah Harper. <laughs> Vanessa Hernandez. Catherine Lau. <laughs> Richard McKinney. <laughs> Jocelyn Mercado. Karen Mora. <laughs> Obina Onije. <laughs> Nathaniel Orkia. Elizabeth Peltier. Aspen Scott.
Micah Scott. Let's have another round of applause for these new members. When you receive an honor, it's always a wonderful and warm feeling. And you can look at these certificates and feel good about it. As soon as you receive the honor, and you have a brief period to bask in the glow of candle lights and spotlights and of flash photography. What matters then and from there forward is what you do with it and what mark you leave in society. And in reality, your great quest is to find out what God's call is on your life and what his plan is for your life. Because he has plans bigger than you can ever imagine. And he longs to show them to you. Earlier, Ms. Garrity quoted from Paul writing to the church in Corinth. In another place in his letters, at one point, he reminds those at Corinth, and he would remind us here today, that you should remember you are not your own. You were bought with a price. So glorify God. certificates and um, now that we're going to go our separate ways may you please guide us and direct us in your path and that we may accomplish your goals and what you have planned for us and please keep us safe and let us be ready for your second coming in Jesus name we pray